is a new Renault Sport Megane Trophy R. You could buy both of its predecessors for the same price as one of these, even before you spec the fancy carbon wheels and brakes, which we'll come to in a moment. And in today's Auto Car Heroes video, that Trophy R is going to meet those two cars. This is its immediate predecessor, the 275 Trophy R, which I think is absolutely terrific. And then from about a decade or so ago, the two-seat plastic windowed car that started it all, the R26R. So the story begins inside this, which is the Megane R26R. Now, it wasn't the first hot Renault, it certainly wasn't even the first hot Megane. There was a quick version of the Megane hatchback before this one, but it was the first of the cars which have become something of an extraordinary lineage. And are defined by 8 minutes, 17 seconds, which is how fast this car went around the Nürburgring at the hands of Renault's test drivers setting a front-wheel drive production car record. Now, does that matter? Does a ring time really matter? Well, no. There are great driver's cars which would not be very quick around the Nürburgring at all. But as a measure of performance, and if you want to make a statement about your hot hatchback's measure of performance, it's as good a yardstick as any, I suppose. But what defined the R26 more than how fast it went? was how it went about it. I'm sitting in a real proper race bucket seat with six point harnesses. Behind me there is a half roll cage, there are no seats. Behind them and next to them, there are Perspex windows. This whole thing is loud because Renault managed to extract 123 kilograms worth of kit from this car. 123 kilos from a hot hatchback that wasn't that heavy in the first place. And it also set a trend that Renault continues now in that when it makes one of these lightweight extreme hatchback, or you might call them two-seat coupe versions of its hot hatchback, it does not up the power of its car at all. So this has the same 227-ish horsepower, two litre turbocharged engine, that the Megane R26 had. It has a six-speed manual gearbox, it has a limited front differential. You could get really hot uh, proxies, triple eight tires or something like that for it. But fundamentally, it was about doing more with less. And you can feel that, you can feel the alertness, you can feel the keenness. The steering's a bit lighter than you would necessarily expect by uh, all of today's standards, but it's really accurate. It's got a quite a thin rim to the steering wheel. As cars have adopted electric power steering, the steering tends to get quicker these days than it, than it used to be. But this is just so accurate, so precise, so smooth, that it is really terrific. And you get that terrific noise from the exhaust. And because there's no sound ending, it's just a thoroughly engaging and entertaining and intoxicating way of doing things. Weirdly, not everybody thought so at the time. So when this car came out, it was £27,000, which if you think about the price of the new Trophy R, it's not very much at all. There were 430, 450, I think, worldwide, of which in the UK, we got 230 of them in right-hand drive form because in the UK, we love cars like this. But even so, at 27 grand, it was considered expensive 11 years ago, 12 years ago, and Renault had trouble shifting them all. There were Renault executives in the UK who ended up running one for a while, and prices dipped down to about 12, 13, 14 thousand pounds. They've come back up as this car has become appreciated for what it is, which was a car that really started something when it comes to hot Renaults in particular, hot hatchbacks in general. And I think today it is accepted that it is something of a benchmark, something of a landmark car. The Megane 275 Trophy R followed it, so let's get out of this and into that and see how that compares. And so to the Megane 275 Trophy R, which in 2014-2015, using similar themes again to the R26R, did a similar thing. So inside I've got six point harnesses again, although there is also an inertia reel uh, seat belt. I've got fixed back bucket seats. There's nothing in the back but a strut brace rather than a full half cage. Uh, the rear windows aren't 
the side windows aren't big enough to make them to bother making them perspex but the idea was similar do more with less so there's a bit less weight there is no more power and this car set a new Nürburgring lap time of around 754 so it took a good 20 seconds out of the R26R if anything it's even louder than the R26R 20, no idea if you can hear me barely hear myself there's loads of wind noise loads of road noise and it's got this titanium Akrapovich exhaust which just makes an absurd sucking noise all the time and although this car has quicker more immediate more responsive steering than the R26 it feels like a bigger heavier car because it is I suppose it's also a much faster one and one I don't know if you can see me moving up and down more but it, it feels more stiff more rigid more sort of keyed down to the tarmac if you like weirdly the r26r was actually a bit more comfortable than the r26 it was based on because it was that much lighter its springs were 10 percent softer so it mooches down the road in a way that is slightly less committed and unfocused than this now i remember going on an early drive of this car and meeting laurent hergol who is the french chassis engineer who sets all of the Nürburgring lap types for Renault Sport cars and it was a similar sort of time to when I think Seat did a lap time in a, a Leon Cupra and Laurent was saying actually when he sees the video of the Seat there was quite a lot of leaning on the on the front tyres and quite a lot of power and keeping the car as straight as possible the Renault and this is what I think a lot of key drivers really like about it is that it was about carrying cornering speed when you turn it en engages the rear in the cornering process all four wheels are cornering and you can just maintain more mid corner speed you turn in it lifts it corners with all four wheels and you just be carried so much more speed in one of these that it could set a faster time with less power and no the Nürburgring is not relevant to how people drive most of the time but the agility that lets this car go quickly there is evident in the road if anything it makes it a little bit too stiff for the road what a surprise racetrack makes road cars too stiff so from that point of view I think I would rather be in an R26R on the road albeit a slower car on track but what's common to both is that I think they have as much in common with something like a Porsche 911 GT3 as they do with a hot hatchback. I mean, arguably more in common with that in that they feel stripped out and track ready. They feel more to me like a GT3 than they do, say, a Focus RS. So by the time this car went on sale, its price had risen to 35,000, which again, quite a lot for a hot hatchback. We'll come to that theme again in a short amount of time. Today they cost the same amount of money as uh, an R26R, I think you can get one for sort of mid, mid to high £20,000 in the UK. Given a choice between the two, if I spent a lot of time on track, maybe I'd be in one of these. If I spent more time on the road, I'd quite like an R26R. But let's have a go in the latest Trophy R, see if it picks up where these left off. One theme I do know about, the increasing pricing structure is intact. And so then to today's Trophy R, which in essence continues some familiar themes. So it is stripped out. It is a full 130 kilograms lighter than the regular McGann RS. There are no rear seats. There is a strut brace back there. But immediately for all the familiarity, it does feel a little bit different to the other two cars. The steering is even more immediate, even quicker even more precise and I think that might be just as a result of body rigidity body stiffness getting better and better as time goes on and as car manufacturers introduce and tweak and refine electrically assisted steering systems that means that for all cars getting bigger and heavier this car doesn't feel any wider than the 275 Trophy R it does feel bigger than the R26 R but for all that cars are getting a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier, the fact that steering systems are more responsive and quicker than ever means that the agility goes up yet again. And it's that agility and the 
chassis performance of this car, there are adjustable Olin's dampers all round. That brings that Nürburgring lap time down again. So this sets a record at like seven minutes 41. So we've gone down from low eight to just under eight to 740. I mean, it, it's, it's an astonishing difference of, I mean, when you look at it in percentage terms, it's not very much, but it's 30 seconds over a lap. What's interesting to me is not that that time was set at the Nürburgring. What's interesting is it is just a yardstick measure of performance and an idea of how much quicker cars can become when they're doing roughly the same thing. So to an extent it picks up where the other Megans left off. It gets no more power than standard so it has 300 horsepower, 296 brake horsepower, old school fans, two seats inside, a titanium exhaust, six-speed manual gearbox, limited slip differential. The idea is that it does more with less. So of the 130 kilograms that have come out of this car, nearly 40 kilograms of that is because it no longer has the active rear steer system that the standard Renault Sport gets and which makes the standard Renault Sport Megane a little bit unpredictable in the way it corners. This is much more responsive, much more linearly responsive. You know when you put in a certain steering input what you're going to get back. But it also maintains the ability to do the thing that the previous Renault Trophy R and R26R did, which is they just carry loads of cornering speed. So it's massively capable, like they are, more round corners than it is in a straight line. They are birds of a feather when it comes to how similar in ethos they feel. They are like each other and more than other hot hatchbacks, they are like GT Porsches, for example. They feel stripped out and race ready and race raw. Not race cars, but that's kind of how they feel. Which brings me to the thing that does separate them. So the previous Trophy R was considered quite expensive at £35,000. The R26R was considered quite expensive at £27,000, £28,000. This car, as standard, is £51,000. And if you want the Nürburgring edition, which brings with it carbon ceramic brakes and carbon wheels, that takes the price to £71,000, which is loads for a hot hatch. And why, you have to think to yourself, maybe this car isn't a hot hatchback after all. Maybe when you see the depth of engineering, you start to say, yeah, I can see where the money has been spent in development and in trick bits, carbon fibre underneath, reducing the weight by 130 kilos, getting the chassis to be capable of doing a 740 Nürburgring lap time. However, I think it's worth remembering that there's a little over a decade between the newest, this car, and the, the oldest, the R26R here, because Renault used to launch its specials near the end of a car's life cycle and figured actually it made more sense to launch it nearer the start so you get the halo effect on the rest of that that model range so there's not as big a difference between three generations here as there could be in, in some other models and in that time you're looking at a standard price that has almost doubled or with the Nürburgring special bits although there aren't many of them I grant you trebled and the performance has increased by about six percent I think going back to the R26R would be the way forward. I really like this generation Trophy R. I think it's a terrific driver's car. I think it's the best front wheel drive driver's car of the moment. But through these three generations, there are three really superb cars. And if I had to pick a moral victor, you can't pick a winner at all. This is the fastest, therefore it's the best at what it was designed to do. But if I was to pick a moral victor, I think it would be the original R26R. Thanks for watching this Autocar Heroes video. You'll find us here at least every week, also at autocar.co.uk and in all good news agents.